Right, with uh, Photoshop open, select it, uh, go to your layers and duplicate them twice, at Control or Apple J. Take the top layer, go up to Filter, select Other and Custom, uh, down to High Pass, give it a radius of 4 pixels and press OK. Change the blending mode to Vivid Light and the opacity over to 70%. Once that's done, you need to uh, select both of the layers. Uh, Control E, Apple E will join them together. Press Control or Apple J again. Um, once we've got that other layer, go back to filter again to other to high pass. Uh, give it a radius of six pixels, and then select the blending mode to color. Give that an opacity of 40%. Now you've got that done. Merge those two layers again with Control or Apple E, then Control J or Apple J to duplicate and then send yourself back to filter and go to blur, Gaussian blur and then choose a blur of about four pixels. Uh, play with that, have a look, see what goes on. Uh, four pixels is done, then with that one you need to add a new mask, the uh, best way is go to layer, new layer mask and choose uh, reveal all. Uh, that will keep the Gaussian filter over the top but we'll have um, will have basically blurred out everything else. Now you need to select a brush size to uh, basically undo all the bits that you don't want blurred. Um, but we're going to go into the eye and uh, the eyebrows and the lips and other features to pretty much accentuate them. We're going to also do the hair and that diamond earring there. So make sure you've got black selected on your, on your thing and see how what happens. Uh, so find the right brush size and as you can see her, instead of there being a blur her eyes now nice and sharply focused I don't know why I'm going back oh we're changing the brush so it's not so harsh okay so layer mask reveal all make sure the layer mask is selected brush is on and you can start getting rid of all these bits and pieces here okay um, as you can see not really being brilliantly careful but you, it's the time issue the more time you take the better this will be the better the effect Important to remember is uh, to do a 50% grey um, fill on that layer. Uh, just there you go, that's what you need to have. 50% grey on the layer. Um, basically, that will just be enough to pop that, that sort of contrasting difference out of the objects that you, you, you reveal will hide. The layer. Um, so there we go, we're starting on the earrings, back to the eyes, uh, to being not so, you don't have to be so uh, tight with your with your revealing and hiding on this because it's 50% grey so it's it's just popping them out. It's, it, you would notice the difference if you did a big line down the face but you don't need to be too worried driven about the edges. However, as always, the closer the better. So just in the lips and uh, move on to the hair in a minute and just get that all nice and done. Um, so I'm gonna so I'm gonna move to that now. Um, just get those eyebrows done. Obviously you can use a bigger brush size to get the bulk of it done and uh, yeah. see how it's just popping it out a little bit there at the end and there we 
Okay. Oh, there's a bit of music as it goes. Yeah, do you want to say anything? Say hi. Hi. Hi, me. Hi, me. <laughs> Here. Podcast. <laughs> Radio 2. So I just like roughly and and revealing those and uh, there we go. We'll uh, merge them two together again and duplicate them. You can already see the sort of pop occurring with the hair and the Fujimi Watsits. So yeah, you could do extra, you could do the writing and the white bits and yeah, whatever. Blah de blah blah. So we duplicated the layer again, now we're gonna change it to a smart layer. Go up to filter and go to noise and reduce noise. You've got to play around with these a little bit. Um I'll show you what I mean if you look at the the sort of focal bit of the hair. Um somewhere. There you go. So you can see that's put it down to nothing really, that's not really doing anything and that's maximum contrasting sharpness. Adding noise. We're trying to preserve the details but as you can see there's like a whitening happening above or in between the shadows of the hair. So you just got to play around with the settings really and see what suits you best. You're, if it's indoor lighting you may find that you don't need to reduce the colour noise so much uh, and the details don't need to be so much but if it's outside you might find also that too many details are spoiling the image. Um, really you want to be using this once you, you've created your focal point in whatever you're shopping really. A golden rule, but it's a good rule. So there we go. That's that done. Let it process its work, and then slow to shop. Okay. All right, and uh, I'm just going to duplicate the layer. No, I'm not. I'm going to put a. Uh, oh, just to show you, you can go back to using the smart object. Don't worry about that too much. So I'm just going to go back to filter and go to uh, sharpen and unsharp mask. And now we can really uh, dedicate ghosting effects to to the image. Obviously, this is where you can overkill and where many people go overkill in HDR. Um, so, yeah, play with your settings, see what you come up with. Blah de blah de blah. See the threshold. Never really want to make that more than ten on anything, particularly portrait wise. But experiment, see what happens. So there you go, for a 150, 15 and 10 you should get a pretty sort of subtle effect. I 
now with control U, Apple U, you can grab the hue, change that to your desired effect as well. Mm -hmm, you can again, it's just a playing with it thing. Adding a brightness and contrast to it. And there you go, we're close to the effect that we were looking for. So there was a brightness of four, a contrast of uh, somewhere near 90, I think. So there you go, just merge those two layers together, and, and there you go, you got your. I'm going to add an overlay just to darken it up a bit more and probably put it on to about 50%. Oh. No. Like 70%. So I've just saved it, go back to the desktop, have a look and see the differences. Uh, just have to go and grab an original one. Sorry, you just have to save it as a JPEG first, then do it again. And then there you go. And to, then the Firefox is in, don't they? As a web. You've not got Firefox? No. Yeah. You're on IE9 and Firefox, whatever, 14, isn't it? Yeah. Run and save it. Run. Uh, run. Yeah. Just run. So, you, when you look at it on your desktop, you might find that. I mean, my desktop background's black, so it, it found it was found to sort of have a a greater contrast on the hair, yeah. which which went too far. But then, um, if we go and look at it. Uh, Literally through an explorer, or not not through Photoshop, oh, just right. through a photo viewer, and look at the contrast and differences. They're not too bad, and that may be because it's on a white background or not. But uh, we'll definitely go and have a look at that now. Uh, two secs. Let's just see what happens. Right. So uh, we'll go to here. We'll have a look at. Um, the comparison. <sighs> right, that was the original. There's the Dave Hill sort of version. So on a on a white background or like that, it looks absolutely fine. Um, it doesn't, you know, you can see up in the top here. There's that kind of drawn effect, mm. yeah, but look at the sort of, the, really we, we have over noised it here, but you can get away with that and it's um, like that anyway, and there's a clear distinction between those two, look, I mean, that, it's an okay image like that, it's in, everything's in focus, it's the right sort of exposure uh, for the, uh, for the aperture in that, but that instantly makes it a little it bit does, more interesting, like it. doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's very clever. So yeah, that's the that's the end of that.